Welcome along to The Savage Filmmaker. My name is Guy Pigton and I make movies, web series, shorts, and I'm here to give tips and advice to indie filmmakers about how to make those things. Now, you guessed it, today is that day where I do What's In My Camera Bag 2021. So, without further ado, we're gonna just jump right on it. What the hell? Who are you? I'm your camera gear, fool! What? You surprised to see me like this? I just didn't expect my camera gear to become sentient. Oh, were you gonna do What's In My Camera Bag video 2021? Yeah. Yeah, just talking about all that amazing expensive gear you have. Yeah. All that gear that most normal people could never afford? Wow. Feeding our corporate overlords and glamorizing the wasteful excesses of a YouTube community who favor the short-term incremental advancements of shiny new equipment over the real mastery of their craft over time? Is this about all my Pocket 6K Pro videos? It's about you being full of shit. You're gonna talk about all of this equipment like you bought it yesterday. Like it's somehow affordable for an indie filmmaker to get all these things that it took you years to acquire. Hey, if, if they work hard and grow their business. Bullsh**. You remember being poor. Yeah? Yeah you do. Because it was yesterday. You're still paying off half of this stuff. You checked your bank account recently? Oh, well, I try not to. Doesn't look good, does it? No. A lot of debts, isn't there, son? It is hard to sleep at night. Ain't gonna be no sleep with those gear debts on your mind. So what should I do? Are you a real indie filmmaker or are you just a YouTuber who says he makes films? I'm an indie filmmaker! Then you do an indie filmmaker's survival gear guide. All the gear you need to take that first step into making movies on a budget. That actually makes a lot of sense. The camera gear knows all. Now, close me up. Go on. Close it. Yep, there we go. Go on. Okay. Hmm. As someone who's made indie films for over a decade, these are my top picks for an affordable, versatile, minimal indie filmmaker setup that ticks all the boxes. I'm going to try and keep it simple. I will try and recommend only one item per category, one lens, one mic, one camera, but I'm going to cheat a little bit and give you a few additional options at different price points if you want to save money. The camera. You want to start making movies, then start with your camera. Cinema quality cameras have never been cheaper, although this is probably going to be our most expensive purchase, but also the most vital. If you follow my channel, there's no surprise what I'm going to recommend here. The Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K Pro. Why this camera? It's cheap, relatively speaking, compared to any other camera on the market that offers these specs. 6K, raw shooting, 5 inch touchscreen monitor, there is nothing that can compete in terms of value for money. You also get DaVinci Resolve 17 to edit your cinematic masterpieces with, so you can get rid of the expensive Premiere Pro license and its constant crashes. The 6K Pro has built in ND filters, so you don't need to buy one or several separately for your lenses. The tiltable monitor is also big and bright enough to use without requiring a separate external monitor to film with. More savings. It shoots on cheap SSD hard drives or SD or CF cards. It has mini XLR cables to run two mics into and its preamps are surprisingly good. Not to mention all the various shooting options, 6K B-RAW, 4K ProRes, 1080 ProRes, and many other resolutions in between. Without a doubt, the 6K Pro offers you the most bang for your buck of any camera at the time of making this video. Just get ready to buy a shit ton of spare batteries. On the bright side, even those batteries are cheap. If you want to see an affordable way to rig out this camera for more filming flexibility, check out my video here. But what about the old models, I hear you ask? They're even cheaper now the 6K Pro has come out, particularly second hand. Yes, these cameras also provide excellent image quality, but let me explain why you shouldn't buy these. The Pocket 4K is a micro four-third sensor. 
in my opinion, Micro Four Thirds lenses just don't offer the depth of field to often achieve what I consider the cinematic look, because it's so much harder to get separation between your background and your foreground, which means you have to buy a speed booster to use EF glass. You can buy the Viltrox version and save money, but I have heard many stories about their unreliability. If you choose to buy the more reliable and higher quality Metabone speed boosters, you are spending an extra $650, which then means the camera is now almost exactly the same price as the original Blackmagic Pocket 6K, which offers a superior sensor and a direct connection to EF lenses. Okay, so why not buy that Pocket 6K instead of a 6K Pro to save some money? Well, again, your savings are negated by the fact you will need to buy an extra monitor. The original 6K's touchscreen does not tilt, which is not very convenient for constant filming, and neither is it bright enough to use in very sunny conditions. You'll also need a cage to connect this external monitor to the camera body, and by the time you've done both of these things, you spent about the same amount as you would have just buying the Pocket 6K Pro outright. So considering all the additional features of the 6K Pro and the fact the other models will cost close to the same to get up and running really effectively, it's a no-brainer to opt for the newer model. The 6K Pro is the perfect introduction into the world of raw filming and also high-resolution filming. But with these advances come hidden costs, which I talk about here and maybe $2,500 seems too much for you, and maybe you are quite happy filming in HD. In which case, there's a whole world of options out there, especially if you go second hand. You can pick up a Canon C300 Mark I for under $1,500 on eBay. It offers a high quality efficient HD codec, good low light performance, and excellent onboard preamps for running sound directly into it. I've owned this camera, and I love this camera. The final suggestion for around $700 on the used market is the original OG DSLR camera, the Canon 5D Mark III. Apart from how affordable it is, why this camera in 2021? Two words, full frame, which means it offers something none of the other cameras on this list can. You get delicious bokeh, phenomenal low light performance, and yes, those wonderful Canon colors. I've shot my most recent feature film on this camera. You want an endorsement? Go watch that right now on Amazon Prime for free and see what a $700 camera is capable of. Lens. Your camera is just an expensive paperweight until you purchase a lens. The lens gives your camera life. And my go-to lens is the famous Sigma 18 to 35 mm art lens at $680. Why is this lens so often used? Because of its versatility. The 18 to 35 mm focal range means you can capture great wide shots and close-ups, and because of its aperture of 1.8 wide open, it is great for shoots where you don't have much light. Well, on an indie film, that's gonna be a lot of the time. So having a lens with a low f-stop is crucial. This is like having three prime lenses in one, and when you pair it with a Blackmagic 6K Pro, this is the Swiss Army knife of lenses. If you could use only one lens for an entire shoot, there are few more capable than the Sigma 18 to 35. That means it's a great place to start for any indie filmmaker. The only con of this lens is that it does not have in-body stabilization, but it's well worth the trade-off. And there's a type of magic source that occurs when you combine the Sigma with a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera. The results? Perfection. If you're going with a full-frame camera, like the Canon 5D Mark III, just swap out the 18 to 35 mm Sigma for the Sigma 24 to 35 mm f2. It's maybe not quite as good, but will provide most of the same benefits, but for full frame. Some people complain about the Sigma lenses being a little clinical and overly sharp and perhaps lacking in character. So, as my bonus recommendation, I suggest the Helios 44-2, a Russian vintage 55 mm lens. Why this lens? At 55mm, it will complement your 18 to 35mm Sigma perfectly, providing you a tighter close up option with a softer, swirly bokeh with all the character in the world. It's a unique and different look, and best of all, you can find this lens second hand on eBay, often for under $100. A note on lenses currently, of the lenses I own, none of them were purchased new. I always buy second hand. 
As long as you buy from someone reputable and preferably have the option of a return window, there's nothing wrong with looking on the used market where you can purchase lenses for often half of what they might cost in you. Tripod. I've got some bad news, indie filmmakers. Handheld Cinema Verite style shooting is played out. Get your camera on sticks whenever you can and compose your shots with that Kubrick precision. I suggest the E-Image two-stage aluminium tripod with the GH05 head for $359. While you would certainly consider this a cheaper tripod, it's very functional and gets the job done. No, it's not fancy, and there are better options out there, but to keep your budget on point, this is a great choice. But please note, you will spend a lot of time with your tripod. He or she will become a dear friend that you always turn to on set for a helping hand. Someone you rely on and trust with your most prized possession, your camera. Do you want that experience to be smooth, comfortable, easygoing and fun? Or do you want to be fighting day in and day out with them, asking them to do things they're just not capable of? If you chose option A, then invest in your tripod now. If you want to take your relationship to the next level, look at the E-Image carbon fibre version with the GH06 head. In years to come, with that tripod standing beside you, looking out at another beautiful sunset you're capturing together, you'll be happy you didn't go the cheapest route. True love. Microphone. Nice pictures are great, but they mean nothing without good audio. Time and time again, I see indie filmmakers pour all of their work into their visuals while neglecting their sound. Don't be one of those people. For its versatility and affordability, I recommend the Deity VMic D3 Pro for $200. US What I like about this microphone is that you can run it into a 3.5mm jack, which suits recording with DSLR style cameras. Or you can buy this adapter and run it into your XLR ports when working with more professional mic connections. It has its own rechargeable power supply, so it doesn't require phantom power. And it has a handy gain knob on the end to boost its signal whenever you need to adjust your levels. These features make it very flexible. The sound quality, while not perfect, is very good for its price. If you want the best possible sound, then you'll need to step up to something much more expensive, like the Sennheiser MKH416 at $1000. I've lost count of how many sound operators I've spoken to who use this microphone, and they have been a staple in the industry for years. The con for this mic, apart from its price, is that it requires phantom power. Price-wise, if you want to get something in between these two budgets for your audio setup, the Deity S Mic 2 provides a great in-between option that is more affordable at $429 with extras. Now, sometimes a shotgun microphone is just not practical. So, if you'd like to complete your sound setup, you'll want wireless lavalier microphones, and they're worth getting if your budget will allow it. In my opinion, there are none better for features, size, and price than the Rode Wireless Go 2. You can see my full review of them here. Boom pole. Here comes the boom. That's right, sometimes you need to get closer than your camera to pick up good sound. And for that, you'll need something like the Aura CFP58B carbon fiber boom pole at around 200 US dollars. This boom seems harder to find nowadays, but I absolutely swear by it. Having the internal microphone cord means you never have to worry about your cables getting tangled up around your boom. And it's incredibly light, meaning it can be held up for long takes without difficulty. This has been one of my best purchases of the last year, and I use it constantly. You may not always have a soundy, but if you have one of these paired with a good microphone, you've won half the battle. If you can't find the Aura version, try the E-Image BC09P carbon fiber boom for $250 US at its shortest length. For those wanting to save more money, try the KTEC KE89CC aluminium boom pole. Sound recorder. Look, we all love running our sound directly into our camera. It's fast, it's easy, it keeps things simple, we don't have to sync any sound in post. But relying on your camera's internal preamps, even ones that are quite good like the Pocket 6K Pros, is not going to lead to the best quality sound. And if you're filming on a DSLR or mirrorless camera, then forget about it. You're going to need a sound recorder ASAP. I recommend the Sound Devices Mix Pre 3 for $710. It has three XLR connections and one 3.5mm jack. It can record up to five tracks and has some of the best preamps that I've ever worked with. 
it's small, it's compact, it has a sensible, easy to use interface that features a simple version for noobs and a more advanced menu system for pros. So you don't have to be a genius to get your audio up and running and sounding crisp and clean using this recorder. You can set this up on small scale shoots and you can hand it off to a soundie on bigger projects. The new version, the Mix Pre 3 Dash 2 has 32-bit floating point recording, which essentially provides a way to record your audio without peaking. If it's too quiet, expand it in post. If it's too loud, reduce it and you'll get no distortion. It's an amazing feature for those of us who tend to set up our sound and forget about it. But if you want to save some money, you'll find the first version on eBay for between two thirds to half the price of the new one. This is the one I own, but note, it does not feature 32-bit recording. And if you really want to save some money, you can use the Tascam DR60 DMK2 field recorder for $200, or even less secondhand. While it's not as feature-rich as the Mix Pre 3 and its preamps are not as good, it's excellent value at this price and will definitely satisfy the more budget-minded filmmaker. It also has a convenient mounting point on top to attach your camera. Lighting. I could dedicate a whole video to lighting, but for us we're going to keep it as simple as possible. While many of you have seen the Aperture 120D and a light dome to be the favourite setup of the YouTuber, for me it's just a little too expensive. I recommend the Falcon Eyes 12T at $200. It's a simple rectangular light, but as I've tried to stress with this list, it exemplifies versatility. You can use it as a hair light or backlight, as I am now. You can use it as a key light, you can use it as a fill light. It provides great, soft, bright light. No, it's not by color, but you don't need it to be. Just set it up, turn it on, and forget about it. 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 It won't provide the most beautiful light, and it's not the most powerful, but it works on almost any set. I'm constantly taking this to corporate jobs because of its size and weight and the fact that you can power it using a V-mount battery or mains power. It's just so compact, you can basically put it anywhere and it only takes a few seconds to set up. Did I mention it's cheap? And you could also upgrade to his big brother, the Falcon Eyes RX 18T at $250. Now, as a companion piece for these lights that offers amazing value for money at $100, I also recommend the Aperture ALMC. This tiny light is magnetic and can be stuck on practically anything. It has programmable lighting effects and a full RGB spectrum of colors. You can use this as a simple eye light or pop it in the background of your scene as an accent light. The possibilities are endless, as this little fella can do it all. There are still many costs we haven't factored in. Things like camera bags, memory cards, battery solutions, cages, shoulder rigs. But don't worry, you'll find a lot of that information in my previous rig builds here. The truth is, part of being a good indie filmmaker is learning to do a lot for very little. So start with these basics and work your way up. If you've enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please consider giving it a like and subscribing. And if you'd like to support this channel, check out the link in the description to watch my new feature film, Older, available free on Amazon Prime and Tubi. If you dig it, maybe consider giving it a review. Got a question about gear for your next indie film? Well, chuck it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it there or in a new video. As always, I am The Savage Filmmaker, and I'll catch you on the next one. Dude. Oh. I'm an idiot. <laughs> oh my God.